Hello folks, welcome to another episode of Wood Chopping Time. I'm your host, Chad Stanton, and if you've been following this series, you know we've been talking about dovetails. Now in the first episode, we talked about the material and the orientation of the grain. In the second video, we talked about the size of the tails and pins and laying out the lines. And now, this is it. This is where we're actually going to hand cut our dovetails. Now, when it comes to dovetails, there's two schools of thought on what should be done first. Either the tails or the pins. Now, I like to do the pins first. The reason being, I'll explain a little bit later in this episode. So I have the board here already laid out. And to make sure that I'm removing the right part of the tails or the pins, I've gone ahead and I've shaded with a pencil the waist of it. Okay, now I'm putting it in the vise. And when it comes to sawing, I like to have the material up closer to me. That way I'm not leaning over on the bench. It's not only better for my eyesight, but it's better on my back. Okay, and of course, cutting the dovetails uh, requires having a good saw. Now, even with a good saw, it doesn't guarantee that you are going to cut exactly on that line. And this is something I've had trouble with for years. So here's a couple of little tips that will help that. Now, I have my chip carving knife. And I use this more than just for carving. In fact, I use it for a variety of things, and this is one of them. And so what I'll do with the knife is I'll push it in straight down on the line. And then on the waist side of the material, I'll remove a small chip of wood. What that does for me is now it gives me a place for me to set the saw. It's already kind of started in a sense. And this is going to aid me in getting the saw started. Once the saw is in the wood, it pretty much will track straight. But getting it started, that's crucial. So let me go ahead and do the same to these other lines. Okay, now I'm ready to do some cutting. Now, a couple of things. When you're sawing, you want to make sure that your finger is pointing forward. Don't grip it all the way around like this. Have it point forward. The reason being is, mentally, we are telling ourselves we're going straight forward with it. The other thing is, <clears throat> I want to make sure that my right leg, since I'm right-handed in this case, my right leg is standing a, a step back from me. And I want to make sure, too, that my elbow is in line with my wrist. I don't want to be sawing like this. It's going to get all squirrely and crooked. You want to keep it straight and in line, kind of like a train. Now, when I place the saw on here, the other thing I like to do is I use my thumb as a fence over here. And so I'm going to make the cut. Now, you'll notice I'm angled upward and then as I cut down I'm gonna level off okay now the last thing you do on sawing is since this is a push saw as I go forward then I lift the saw out I don't want to make my last stroke back and lift out the reason being is as the saw comes through the wood, it'll blow those fibers out. If you pull the saw back and lift it out, sometimes what it'll do, it'll suck some of those loose fibers in, and then when you look, it gives the impression that you overshot the line. So you'll put the saw back in one more time, and then you've gone past your line. And when you're cutting, it's always good to keep going in the same direction. Let's say I had a really long board, so I'll cut these all the same direction, and then I can come back and cut the other direction. So let me finish these up, and then we'll move on to cutting them out. Mm -hmm. 
So I finished making all the cuts for it. And at this point, if I was a little bit off of my line, I'm not too worried about it. It'll be more crucial in the next step. But right now, I need to remove the waist to just reveal the pins. Now, there's several ways to do this. You can use a coping saw and cut it out, but I prefer just to use a chisel. Now, there is a concern. When you use a chisel, if I put that right on the line and strike down, well, because of the bevel on the chisel, it's going to push it back a little bit. And so then I'll overshoot that line, and we don't want that. So some people will tell you to step it forward a little bit in front of the line. That way, when you strike it down, it will bump back. Well, I can never seem to get that measurement just right. Either I'm too far forward and it doesn't bump back enough, or I wasn't forward enough and it bumps too far. So I have a method that works well for me. Now I've already in the previous video used my marking gauge and put a scored line down the board. And so what I'll do at this point is with my chip carving knife, I'll make the line a little bit deeper just in the waist area, not along the whole board. And kind of just like what we did when we were sawing, I will now make a trench on the waist side for where my chisel can already rest in it. Now, when I'm doing this, you have to be careful. The way I'm gripping the knife, I'm coming on a slight angle, and my thumb is down on the board and I'm pulling towards me. Okay? So I'll do that on both sides. All right, now I'm ready to use my chisel. Now, when it comes to using chisels, it's really important to have a good chisel and a sharp chisel. These happen to be the Irwin chisels. I love these because they hold an edge for a long time, and you can get them razor sharp. Uh, I also modified mine a little bit. I, I sharpened the edges. That allows me to get a little bit tighter into the corners of these dovetails. All right, so now with my chisel, I'm going to strike down on it. And I'm going to remove just a little bit of the waste here. And I can do that again. Now if you notice, I left an area here that's just a little bit of flat spot. I'll explain that in a minute, but I'm going to do something a little different on the other side. So once again I'll chisel down, straight down into it. Now this time, instead of removing a little bit of waste up here, I'm actually going to turn the chisel over so the bevel is facing up, and I'm going to strike straight into it. And remove the material. Now you're probably thinking, whoa, hang on a second, Chad. 
why didn't you do that on the bottom side? It looks like that would be easier. Well, I need this flat spot because what that is doing is as I'm putting the chisel down in here and striking on it, that flat spot is preventing the wood from actually folding over and kind of crushing. What I want to do is I want to sever these wood fibers. So that flat spot gives the wood some support. Okay, now I'm, I'm angling the chisel just a little bit because I have to make sure that I'm going with the same direction as that, as the pins. Okay, there's one removed, and let me do the other one. And notice how I'm holding the chisel. I'm pinching the bottom of the chisel these fingers are resting on the wood so not only can I put that into my little trench but it allows me to position it a little bit if need be if I'm up here trying to hold it, it it's, it's going to get out of control I can't steer it so I pinch it down here and then just tap with the mallet and it's important to have really sharp chisels, especially on softwood. If you don't, what it winds up doing is just crushing fibers and not cutting them. Okay. Now, one more thing. I want to take my square and place it in here and I want to make sure that I don't have any high spots. It's okay if the, the middle is a little bit V'd, but I don't want anything proud on it because that will fight me. So take a minute, look through that. You can even sight down on it and again with the chisel hair away and I always like to make my final cuts with the chisel with the outside of the board facing up that way if I'm chiseling down and I have anything that that breaks out or or blows out it'll be on the inside and not on the outside okay that looks pretty good let's make sure my corners are all cleaned up all right, now I'm going to show you how we're going to do the tails, and I'm going to explain why I prefer doing pins first. So I'm getting ready to make the tails now, and here's where I want to explain the advantages and disadvantages to doing tails first or pins first. Now, it's true if you are doing the tails first, what's great about this is you could take all your boards, Say, for example, like you got a bunch of drawers that you're doing. You can take all your boards and you can gang them together and make the cuts all at the same time on this. And that really speeds up the process. However, now when you have to transfer the marks to make the pins, you place the board in your vise like to the height of a block plane or scrap piece of wood, any sort. And then you lay this on top. You lay the tails on top. And you have to try and line it up. And I find this is where it becomes awkward for me, difficult. If I just slightly bump this or move it as I'm trying to hold it with my hand and then get in here and mark, especially if I have really small or really tight um, pins getting in there and I like to use a pencil I find it's hard to get the pencil in there 
I'll explain why in a second why I prefer the pencil, but I just, just don't prefer this method. It works, especially if you have something small, but let's say you're building a really large carcass. Well, it gets kind of really uncomfortable at that point to line everything up, in my opinion. So, here's why I like doing pins. The board that is going to be the tails, I want to make sure that the outside of the board is going to be facing down away from me. Now what I'll do is I'll take the pin board and place it on top and I just make sure it's flush. I like this because now I have gravity working for me. And again, if I'm building a very large carcass, say like the sides to the back, I don't need clamps. I don't have to worry about it moving too much because gravity is working for me. Okay, so now with a mechanical pencil, and I like the mechanical pencil because I can get a really sharp point on this. I'll reach in here and trace the outline of the pin. Now a big mistake at this point is to remove this board and start cutting. It's real easy to confuse what is the waste and what is the material you want to keep. So what I do is right after I trace that, I slide it back so now I can clearly see, oh yes, I want that gone, this gone, and that gone. All right. Now I'm going to put this in the vise and I need to transfer these lines at least to the top. So I'm going to use a square for that. I'm not so worried about the back side. I just want to make sure that I have it here on the top. My lines are transferred from the side to the top and now I'm ready to make my cuts and this is important. These cuts have to be spot on or I'm going to have a joint that's too loose or I'm going to have one that's too tight. So here's where we talk about cutting to the line. If we're dealing with soft wood, what I like to do is I will cut the wood and I try and leave where I can still see the pencil line. The reason being is because it's soft wood I know that's going to compress when it goes together. If it's a hard wood, well I'm going to try and cut and totally remove that pencil line. It's a very fine place to be and this is where the sawing becomes important. This is why I like to use a mechanical pencil versus some kind of marking knife because the marking knife kind of already makes a small trench or groove and your saw has the tendency to want to track and go right into that mark from the marking knife. Especially if you're trying to leave it. It's not bad if you want to remove it, but if you're trying to leave it, I find the saw just wants to wander over into it. So I like the pencil. But again, these cuts are very important, so I'm going to go back to my trick with my chip carving knife. In this case, push the knife in just in front of the line. Okay, because remember, I'm trying to keep the line. And then on the waist side, take a small chip out. And I'll do that for each of these. So by having that notch, that's really going to aid me in getting that saw started to cut that line straight. But I find it difficult to cut on that angle. I like to have gravity working with me. So what I'll do is I will turn the board so that the pencil line is running parallel with my square. Now I can just concentrate 
I'm cutting down straight on the line. This makes it a whole lot easier for me. So I'll skip this one and come to the next one. And now I'll readjust it. I'll turn it the other way. Looks pretty good. Again, using my thumb as a fence. Cut down to my mark. You'll notice the last stroke is going forward and then out. All right, so I have to cut these ends off here. And once again with my uh, chip carving knife, same thing, I can push it on the line, make a little notch. And I'll do the other side. So I'll cut this other one off and then I'll reset this up and we'll chisel out that waste. So just like before, I'll use my chip carving knife, go over that scored line and remove some waste. Just enough for the chisel to get started. I'll do that on both sides. And then, with a smaller chisel, I'll do the same thing. Notice how I'm pinching the bottom here of the chisel. And tap it in just slightly. And remove some of that. Flip it over, <clears throat> tap. Now I can't really get in from the front here because my chisel is wider than where the saw cuts are. So I'm just going to keep doing this method. There it goes. Now I want to be real careful that I don't keep pounding on that because you'll notice that right here, if I, if I hit too hard, it's going to wedge that in between the tips of the tails and it can um, just damage it, make it look ugly. So, but at this point I can see it's free. So there we go. Just wiggle that out. And once again, I want to sight down it Clean up any waste I might see in there. I also like to use my chip carving knife for this as well. So like if I have a little bit in the corner, I can push the knife down in there. See just a little bit more. Okay. Alright, so now it's the moment of truth to see if this goes together. Now it's a good thing that we marked our boards inside and out because at this point it would be very easy. They look almost similar. It would be very easy to, to get it backwards. But let's see. So you'll notice I'm applying some pressure to it. It's not just falling in. I don't want to pound it in real hard with a hammer. That is a pretty good fit. 
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that fit. I know when I put some glue in there, it's going to cause the wood to swell a little bit. And any kind of little gap I might be seeing is going to go away. But let's say that you can't get yours that snug. Uh, you did a lot of work and you got some issues with it. Well, I'm going to go over some common problems and some simple fixes for it. Everything from the gaps to maybe the dovetail tails or pins stick out too far. I'm going to show you how to fix that and how to prevent making more problems on our last and final episode of our dovetail series. So until next time, if you like this, please subscribe. Check out our Monday videos where we spotlight you, the woodworker. Check out Wednesday where we answer some viewer questions and go over some possible products of should you own it. And of course, right back here on Friday for the conclusion of our dovetail series. Until then, keep on dancing.